Thank you. Uh, a two-part question. Uh, one, your reference, uh, both of you referred to uh, the dilemmas uh, that result from uh, Israel calling for its recognition as a Jewish state, uh, the alienation of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, community uh, and the confoundment then to uh, the Palestinians being able to, uh, to uh, a, a, even come to some kind of compromise uh, on that point. Are you suggesting then that the government of Israel drop this requirement? simply no longer seek recognition as a Jewish state? And the second point uh, is, uh, is there any concern from the Israeli population, the Israeli Jewish population, that with greater um, uh, equalities and recognitions of, for the Israeli Palestinian populations that the political sophistication in uh, elections, for example, as 20% of the population grows to be 22%, 25%, 27% of the electorate uh, uh, affect the political future of Israel? Well, the second question is very simple. Withdrawal from the West Bank and Gaza. Okay, so in other words, as long as Israel remains in control of the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem, Okay, you are talking about very large number of Arab Muslims, mostly Sunnis, who are members, um, some of them uh, legally, some of them potentially, of the system. So the only demographic solution, if you want to talk in those terms, uh, is really withdrawal from those, uh, those uh, territories. Well, it's the Jewish state, yeah. Yeah. So, but, so, so my, but, but my second response to your first question actually would be that uh, as a matter of diplomatic practice, I would be very much against preconditions on the part of Jews, Arabs, or, or Americans, or anybody in between. So when Netanyahu suddenly jumps in, you know, particularly over the last year and a half with a Jewish state, I think that's more of an internal issue that has to be left out. I don't think that the Israelis should necessarily insist although I hope it will happen, that the Palestinian state should not be Islamic or that the Islamic institution should be limited one way or the other. Uh, I think this is a problem for the Palestinians to deal with. I think it's a major problem, by the way. You know, what will be the impact of Islamic organizations, Hamas and otherwise? But I, don't, I think that once you uh, bring the nature of the regime into the negotiating table, I think that you are uh, burdening the negotiations that are very difficult otherwise, and I would, I would be opposed to it, generally. Um, on the question, on your second question, in terms of the, uh, the growing uh, size of the Palestinian minority within Israel and its potential political impact, um, the problem is, in fact, that or, although that should be the case, um, historically, the Palestinian community have not voted as a single bloc. In fact, they've uh, watered down their political influence uh, through their own political fractiousness. They've divided their vote among a variety of different parties, which has weakened their potential to act as a political voice within the parliament. Um, and, and more recently, uh, exacerbating this uh, fractiousness has been a growing trend to boycott Israeli elections, and there's been, and, and this is something that we discuss in the book, uh, in, uh, over the last decade, increasing abstention from Israeli elections. This is actually one reason why the Israeli right have strengthened politically is because uh, the uh, uh, Palestinian voters in Israel are, have increasingly withdrawn from the Israeli political system. So this is a very worrying uh, development because essentially uh, in the past, by participating in, in, uh, parli in parliament and in elections, it was one way of the Palestinian community expressing its dissatisfaction with the system. The tendency now is in fact to withdraw uh, from the Israeli formal political si system and, 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 and instead conduct politics within their own community. Um, so that, that, that is something that I think is important to keep an eye on. In Wh which is, by the way, just like in Egypt and so many other places, strengthening the Islamic elements within their society. Because the Islamic societies, 
come into the picture, giving services to people, education and so forth, and gaining more and more a strong, stronger and stronger position, thereby in many ways actually radicalizing the community. Okay, the community originally was much more connected to Jewish parties, to the structure of the government. So I think that the withdrawal from the system, in our opinion, is a very, very negative, passive, but nevertheless very negative development. Um, but that, that underscores my, my point, the point of my question, that as you have documented a political, growing political sophistication on the part of the Israeli-Palestinian community, is it possible that the Israeli-Jewish community is concerned that by greater inclusion uh, and, uh, and um, a joining of, acknowledging of their uh, own Palestinian community that they redound to their political detriment by having a greater Palestinian-Israeli political participation. Is that a real fear? Is that out there? Well, it's certainly a fear. I mean, they, 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 general, they would look at this community as um, radicalizing, and they fear that by you know, giving any concessions will in fact lead to the strengthening and further empowerment of this community, which who are, um, as we've described, opposed to Israel as a Jewish state. So they fear that any concessions will in fact uh, be potentially problematic. I think our argument is that, um, you know, it, the, the current, the existing strategy of excluding the Palestinian minority and simply trying to control them is in fact much more likely to result in, in, in a problem for the state of Israel and for the Jewish state than uh, by offering uh, m a greater inc inclusion within the political system. That, by, um, that the only way of actually alleviating this problem is to try, although there are risks, uh, in, the, in the minds of Israeli Jews. And I think those risks um, are real in terms of the, uh, as I said, the, the fact is the Palestinian minority is overwhelmingly opposed to Israel as a Jewish state. But um, denying them access or, or, or representation in the political system is not the solution to that. Uh, the solution to that is, in fact, to, to the ones that we've uh, been describing. So, so in other words, just, I know we're running out of time, but basically I think the right comparisons to make is uh, between the uh, current policy, the status quo, leave it is the way it is, and our strategy. It's not necessarily and not only or exclusively to focus on our strategy, but to ask yourself what happens if nothing Nothing happens. If the policy of marginalization, exclusion, and so forth continues along, by the way, the lines of not solving the external problems, uh, for us, uh, this is uh, a sure thing for, for a disaster. What we are trying to therefore do, once for the last time, you know, sounding the alarm here, uh, we are trying to say uh, political figures, academics, uh, institutes like that have to put these things on the agenda. So the most important thing for us is not that uh, everybody comes out of that and say this is it, this is 100% and let's do everything that these people are saying. But let's talk about it, let's discuss it, let's look at different, uh, you know, different approaches that have been adopted so far. And I just want to remind everybody that you can read more about this very important topic by buying Ilan and Dove's book, uh, The Conflict Within Downstairs for $20. We take credit cards and cash and I want to thank both of our authors uh, today for this very interesting discussion. Thank you all. Thank you.